Here's today's first word, daily devotion. It's a new day, it's June the 3rd, and that means it's a fresh opportunity for us to turn to the Word of God and let God speak to us through His Word. And June 3rd is special because we turn to 2 Samuel 22, and look how it ends here. David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, now as you read this, this wonderful poem, as you read this wonderful song, notice the uh, reminiscent of the Exodus. Notice how the Bible reminds us of the Exodus in June in this song in 2 Samuel 22. David has the Exodus before him. And so there is this issue, there's this idea that we've talked about before, this idea of recapitulation, this retelling or re-encountering. This is God telling that one story that defines every story. God's archetype of salvation in the Old Testament is the Exodus. And of course, that Exodus event is going to be eclipsed by the cross of Jesus Christ. And the cross of Jesus Christ, remember, is um, leading us to another event, the day when the Lord comes back and the kingdoms of this earth become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and we're going to reign with him forever and ever. But for this, David has his mindset on the salvation of the Lord, and that's what we have our mindset on the salvation of the Lord, the exodus and the cross. And one day in eternity, if we still have a memory of these things, and I believe we will because Jesus will have those nail marks in his hand, we will have a memory that will last us forever and ever and ever, a memory of the Lord's second coming of the cross of Jesus Christ and all his mighty, mighty deeds in the Exodus. And so let's turn our attention here to uh, Exodus, 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 20. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me. Why? Because he delighted in me. Why did God rescue you? Why did God save you? Well, the Bible has an answer for that question. And here it is. Because he delighted in you. Why did he save you? Why did he give you hope? Why does he wake you up every day with new morning mercies? simply because he's delighted to do so. It's not a burden for King Jesus to save us. Instead, it's something that he wants to do. He is more willing to save us than we are even willing to ask him. Oh, this is our Savior that we get to serve, that we get to know. Look at verse 31. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all of those who take refuge in him. And let's look at verse 50. From For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. Notice how wide-sweeping this idea of salvation is. It's for the whole world. And we get that even from the Old Testament. And sing praises to your name. Great salvation he brings, look at this, to his king. And shows steadfast love to his anointed, or to his Christ, to David and his offspring forever. And it's that singular hope here expressed in this poem in 2 Samuel 22 that echoes down the pages of Scripture. And that leads us perfectly into our uh, old or our New Testament reading in Acts chapter 9. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, interesting, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he went on his way, he approached Damascus. Suddenly a light from heaven shone round him. Falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now look at this question. Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. But rise and enter the city and you'll be told what you are to do. Now look at the paradigm. Who are you, Lord? What do you want me to do? That's the question. We oftentimes start with, what do you want me to do, Lord? But instead, we need to start where we in on the first principles. And the first principles are, who are you? And once you understand who he is, then you'll know what you are to do. Now look at verse 9. We have another reference to three days here. That's an interesting passage or an interesting point for us to think about three days. 
in uh, Saul's commissioning. Three days, of course, is important, and that three days echoes even uh, past the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, let's close our reading today by looking at uh, verse 31. And this is, of course, a wonderful prayer for the church. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace, was being built up, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. And that's the prayer that we should have. Lord, let our church have peace. Let our church be built up. Let our church walk in the fear of the Lord, in the comfort of the Spirit, and Lord, let our church multiply. You keep reading the Bible, you keep seeking the Lord, and our church will multiply.